pitch of an illustrious college career, Jack Townsend looks to complete his three-hit shutout and give his team a second national championship in as many years. He takes the sign. The wind-up. And he's done it again! Jack Townsend has led his school to consecutive national championships! The crowd is wild! We can see him in pinstripes now! Jack Townsend's name in lights in the Big Apple! The Holly carried him around the field after the game. And cheered him. <laughs> and speaking of the angel... Hail to the hero! <laughs> I am so proud of you. <laughs> So proud of you. Oh, where's your father? Oh, right outside, speaking with Professor Simmons. We ran into the prof and he walked down with us. We thought you might have forestalled the forthcoming happy event by eloping. <laughs> father for chaperone? Well, don't you dare do it. I never forgive you spoiling my chance to wear my gown. I'm going to be just the most stunning bridesmaid. Am I not, Mother? Of course, dear. <laughs> there was a townie in here to see you earlier. A townie. I'm here to see towns and Jack. He's not Townsend. here. Fresh little shrimp, though. He said he'd wait. Wasn't he outside? I didn't see anyone. He'll be back probably. I'd look out for a touch. I hear they're seeing you on the campus. You simply got to come, all of you, in honor of Hero Jack. Well, I'm going with you. I'll show you young people that I can celebrate with the best of you. <laughs> Are you sure it's not too much for you, mother? What says Jack? Oh, dear old mother. Young mother, I should say. <laughs> Come on, everybody. You people go on ahead. I'll catch up with you. Come on, Jumbo. We won't be alone again for ages. So proud of you, Jack, dear. Praise from your sister was wonder enough for one day. But I wish I could tell you how proud I felt when I watched, sat in the grandstand, thought of how jealous all the other girls were. I couldn't help but saying to myself, he loves me. Me. You make me feel mean and contemptible when you talk like that. Contemptible? How foolish you are, Jack. I wanted to shout to all of them, he's mine. Mine. I will be in three months. Three months? You know the three months are gonna seem like three years, don't you? Three centuries. But I was telling you how splendid you were this afternoon. It struck me as symbolical of the way that you would always play in the game of life. Fairly, squarely, refusing to weaken at critical moments, advancing others. My sacrifices, fighting the good fight for the cause, the team, and always, always, whether vanquish or victor, deserving a hearty, honest cheer mm. for the other side. Caught in the act. Evelyn, they're waiting for you outside. They want to make a start for the steps and see the parade form. It's due to start shortly. Aren't you coming with us, the both of you? 
We'll join you there. Or better still, the parade comes right by here, doesn't it? Always used to in the old days. Yes, Dad. You go on with the others, Evelyn. We'll be able to join you when you pass by here. I'm off then. You'll surely join us when we pass? Sure thing. Oh, it becomes more difficult every year, I find. All the old landmarks are just disappearing one by one. Yes, even in my time, there have been great changes. <laughs> you don't even realize what this college comes to mean to you until after years. How it becomes inseparably woven into the memories of one's lost youth. Until the two become identical. Yes, I suppose so. Happiest days of my life, of anybody's life. Come to the point, Dad. What? You didn't send Evelyn away in order that you might wax reminiscent. You know that, Dad. You're absolutely right. I did not. I simply had to hear it from your own lips that everything is all right. Then I'll set your mind at rest immediately. Everything is all right. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Why haven't you written me? Until a few days ago, there was nothing new to tell you. When was the operation performed? Last Monday. Have you heard from her since? I received a short note from her that night. It was all over and everything was okay, she said. She told me I needn't worry any longer. That was five days ago. You haven't had any words since then? No. Well, well, that's a favorable sign. If any further complications had cropped up, she surely would have let you know, wouldn't she? Yes. I imagine that she's frightened to death and wants nothing more to do with me. And then, you see, I never answered her letter or telephoned. Mm. You were wrong there, my boy. You know, One's own vanity can blind one in situations like this. Are you absolutely sure that you are the father of this child that would have been born to her? Yes. I'm certain of it. I wish to God that I had grounds for some suspicion of the sort, but no. No. Had I not been in love with Evelyn, I should certainly have married her. Well, if you didn't love this girl, then why did you... Why in the first place? Judging from what Professor Simmons has let slip about your four years here, you were no St. Anthony. Turn your mind back to those days and answer your own question, why in the first place? That's pure evasion, Jack. You're responsible for the Mr. Hyde in you as well as the Dr. Jekyll. Restraint. Restraint. <laughs> yes. Everybody preaches it, but who practices it? This young woman, she was hardly of the class that you've been accustomed to associate with, I presume? She is a working girl. A stenographer. Yes, I know it, Dad. I'm sure the result of it all will be to make me a man more worthy to be Evelyn's husband. God grant it, my boy. <sighs> As I said in my letter, this money is a loan. $200 is quite a sum for a college student to raise on a moment's notice. The wages of sin are rather exorbitant. Well, all's well that ends well. You learned your lesson. Uh, now, should we go join the others? Just hearing that cheer out there awakens the old fever in me. <laughs> Let's do that. Look, here Towns and I get out. See you for a minute. All right, Murray. You join the others, Dad. I'll catch you in a few minutes.
Anything I can do for you? Anything you can do for me? Yes. I'm in rather a hurry, and if it's nothing very important, I'd be just as well pleased if you'd come back some other time. <coughs> important? You may think so. It's not important to you. You come looking for trouble, Marie. <coughs> Better wait until you cool off. <coughs> what does he have to say to me? Out with it. Oh, out with it? Damn you. You're standing there, you're so cool. Dressing them swell clothes and all these other gods and... Nellie's uh Yes, Nellie? <laughs> She's dead. Dead? You killed her, you dirty murder. You don't mean that. Yeah. What do you mean? She wrote to me everything was alright, dead. She's dead. Did I tell you, Nellie, my sister, she's dead. No. That's impossible. It's a lie. What's the of this is your Are you trying to trying to frighten me? I just I tell you she died this morning! She died this morning. But why didn't she? I didn't Why didn't she let you know, you mean? She wrote to you. She told me she did. And you knew she was sick. And you never bothered to answer her. She might have lived if she'd heard from you, if she thought that you cared, but she knew you was just trying to get rid of Stop, her. Stop, for God's sake. I know I should have written. I meant to write. She kept but saying, I want to die. I don't want to live. But I'm going to fix you. I'll make you pay. What do you mean? Don't give me any of that. You know what I mean. You know how she died and you know who killed her. How she died? She was murdered and you know it. Murdered? Yes. And you murdered her. I. What? I murdered her. Are you crazy? Yeah. You and your dirty skunk of a doctor. Yeah, you thought you were safe, didn't you? You go out, pitch a championship game, she lying there dead. You could ruin her, throw her down. Nobody's gonna say a word to you, cause what, you a swell college boy? Captain of your team? And she ain't good enough for you to marry? She was gonna have a kid. Your kid, and since you're too rotten to act like a real man, you sent her to some faker of a doctor to be killed? And she does what you say because she loved you! You can't even think enough to answer her letters when she's dying on account of you. She told you all this? Not a word. Not a word out against you and you, you, you dirty coward. You're out here and you're playing ball. I did what I thought was best for her. No, you sneaked out. Like a coward. You think you can get away with that stuff and then marry some girl of your own kind, I suppose. But you won't. How if I have to go to hell for it? I've always hated you. From the first time that you come to my house. I hate all your kind. You all come to school here and you think you can do as you please with us town people. You treat us like servants. And who are you? Who are you? I'd like to know. You are a bunch of lazy, no good dudes sponging off of your old men. And our girls, our girls think you all are so grand. I knew something like this was gonna happen. I told Millie to look out and she just laughed. When the old lady sent for me, I come home. Nellie wouldn't leave me go for no doctor. You see, I had a hunch what was wrong. She wouldn't say nothing. But I went and I got our doctor, not that faker you sent her to. And he told me just what I'd have thought that she was gonna die. And if I'd have seen you that minute, I'd have killed you. 
You see, I knew it was you. I just couldn't prove it. And one of the kids got scared. Told me Nellie had sent her to your doc for medicine when she first took sick. So I bought a gun. And the kid showed me where he was. I shoved that gun in his face. He owned up. He told me all about you. He offered me money. Lots of it. To keep my mouth shut. Yeah, I took it. That was money he had got from you. That was blood money. And I'll keep my mouth shut. Maybe. Listen, Marie. This affair is unspeakably horrible. And I am everything you say. But I want you. You must believe. That I honestly thought I was acting for the best in having that operation performed. That it turned out so tragically is terrible. You cannot realize how I am suffering. I feel as if I were what you called me. A murderer that don't bring her back to life. You're too late. Too late? What do you mean? You haven't... You haven't told anyone, you haven't... When I left his office, I came home and, uh... She was dead. I came up here looking for you. I was going to kill you. But uh, I got to thinking. <sighs> you ain't worth getting hung for. No, I can see a better way of fixing you. <laughs> when that'll get you right. You didn't tell anyone. What's the difference? There's plenty of time, I know. Murray. For your own sake. For your dead sister's good name. For your family's sake. You must keep this thing silent. I do not plead for myself. I'm willing to have you punish me in any way you see fit. But there are others, innocent ones, who will suffer. Killed my sister. Why do you keep saying that? You know that it was an accident that I would gladly give my own life rather than have it happen. I'll do anything you want, I tell you. You said the doctor gave you money. I'll give you ten times as much. I'll see to it that you get so much a year for the rest of your life. My father is rich. We'll get you a good position. Do anything you wish, only do not punish the innocent. You, you want to pay me for Nelly?
Take it. I was a fool to stop you. It's so good for you. I'm going to the police station, you hear that? You bastard, I'm going to the police station. Jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, which nobody can deny, which nobody can deny. Which nobody can deny For he's a jolly good fellow For he's a jolly good fellow For he's a jolly good fellow Which nobody can deny